Instead, Kelly made things worse. He picked a fight with a Democratic congresswoman who had criticized Trump, demeaned her with an insulting and provably false anecdote, and then stunned the assembled press corps by saying he would only take questions from reporters who had some connection to a Gold Star family seeming to stop himself just short of demanding the name, rank and serial number of the deceased service member. But not everyone who puts on, and takes off, a general's uniform is another George Washington. Indeed, Kelly's performance makes it clear that those who have been placing their hopes in Trump's trio of generals turned advisors are making a mistake. Kelly's strain of military thinking puts him at odds with a society in which, as he says, only a tiny fraction serves, or even knows anyone who serves, and in which few men and women in uniform come from the ranks of America's elite professions that dominate the nation's most influential institutions. Kelly, then, embodies a clash of cultures, a lifelong military man who is now in a hotly contested political civilian role and who looks askance at the nation's civilian democratic culture. That is an unhealthy tendency, and, at times, Kelly's remarks suggested an authoritarian streak that he seems to share with his boss, the president. He lamented the loss of a mythic time in which women were sacred and looked upon with great honor, a time, he reminisced, when gold star families and religion were treated as sacred topics to be upheld and venerated by all Americans. Kelly conveyed the sense that because he and others in the military have worn the uniform, served in combat, and sacrificed their lives, and in Kelly's case, also the life of a son, he feels entitled to make up stories about a member of Congress, an African American woman, and to exclude civilians in a setting, the White House briefing room, that is of course paid for by and meant to serve every citizen. Behind his calm demeanor, he showed the country a frustration, anger and grievance that complements Trump's us against the world mentality and political style. John Kelly, of course, is in a vastly different position in his own unique time and place. And yet, Kelly seems intent on intensifying a clash of values between military authority and civilian norms, constitutional checks and balance, a healthy respect for democratic criticism and tolerance of a free press. Kelly's performance last week suggested that he was willing to exploit this fissure between the civilian and military worlds for his boss's political purposes, an unhealthy tendency in a democracy that's already tottering under the strain of Trumpism. Matthew Dalek, associate professor at George Washington's Graduate School of Political Management, is author of Defenseless Under the Night, the Roosevelt Years and the Origins of Homeland Security.